Yeah, welcome back to Jeff Quinange live on Citizen Television. Uh, where are we? Is that it? Okay, there we go. Sorry about that, Monica. Okay, so we're asking you a question. Francis Atwoli just told us this statement. It says, Kenyans believe in what I am doing. Do you agree? Yes or no? At Atwoli Francis, at Quinange Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag. Make sure you use the hashtag. JK Live will be reading out the poll results at the end of this interview. So, straight to the interview. Oh, let's continue from where we left off. And maybe First of all, let's, let me comment on that one. Go on. You know, Kenyans should believe in what I, uh, I'm, I'm doing. One, I was here with you in March, July, and September. And I was appealing for peace and dialogue. Yeah. So that we cannot have a long, pro, pro, protracted uh, political wars. Yes. And two, uh, if you would have gone that way, and whatever all I told you has come to pass. In March and July, I told you that it would be an uphill task. Yes. Yeah. You if, said there, if there's no dialogue. Correct. Between the two. Yes. And all it has come to pass <laughs> because from uh, President Uhuru and the first attempts of his election in August. Yes. From August to mm. last month when he was forming a cabinet, yeah. five months. That is an uphill task. Correct. In any political situation. And so whatever I have said, it has come to pass. In the meantime, yeah. there was another swearing in. Yeah. Yeah, and there was another swearing in, of which you cannot be able to explain where it emanated and where it was going, yes. because that is how politics is. But what are and you... And you can see the crowd. Yes. Yeah. Almost two million. There was a lot of people. A lot of people. So you see Kenyans, uh, and if there was dialogue, uh, that crowd would have not been there. People would have been, people are supposed to move towards one direction. Yes. For the nation to spur economic growth. Correct. Yeah. But what and also to yeah. attract investors. Yeah. Yeah. Which is and what that is what we need. Correct. Yeah. You can see how our debt is swelling. It's climbing. 4.6 trillion. Can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine? And I said, according to our economic and research department at the Central Organization of Trade Unions, from August to November, we had lost 100,000 jobs. What? 100,000 jobs. Who will bring money in a place where, uh, you know, there is no head or a tail? So that is why we are saying it's good always to try to reach out to your opponents. That does not mean that will seed your position yeah. or it will make you less a man. Okay. So, but, uh, uh, look, the president listens to you. Yeah. He listens to you. Why can't you tell him? Or his people. No, no, the president. I have told you here time and again that the president Uru means well for this country. Yes. Yeah. He means okay, well. His people. But then. you know he has advisors. And like somebody, I will tell you what, somebody wrote in a, the other previous Sunday's paper called Warigi. Says so at will makes noise. So our, this guy uh, he would better concentrate on trade union movement than what you know, forgetting to know that the trade union movement from where I come from is a pressure group. And if a problem, any problem occurred, be it political or any whatever type of a problem occurs in this country, it is women, children, and workers who will suffer. Mm. And that is why any credible labor leader would always caution the nation when politics are derailing the peaceful yeah. means of governance. Yes, but you said he has bad advisors. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely correct. Why should we have opposition? These people are all Kenyans. Why should you? Why? why? If it is you, Jeff, why should I reach, you, uh, reach out to you and ask you what you want? This is the type of what I'm having. Do we share? This one we can't share. Why? I give you the reasons. Mm -hmm. huh? Like what, if I will give you a brief example, like what the NASA guys are claiming. They want uh, reforms in police, yes. reforms Judicial. in IEBC, uh, uh. reforms in judiciary. Yes. If I was the president, I would tell them, come. Okay. You have your MPs in parliament, isn't it? Mobilize them. I would try to mobilize because it is parliament. That is a prerogative of parliament uh, to pass a resolution, yeah. to pass laws. Yeah. If they want us to go for a referendum, it is parliament. But the parliamentary MPs aren't even attending committee meetings. When you know when a country becomes commercial, you will be surprised that everybody, even in your own house, he, he or she becomes commercial. Meaning? That when people, if they are to do something, they must be paid for what they are doing. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Na kama you know when a country, I said here in March, sometimes back last year, yeah. that a country that has young people, men and women, everybody has changed from a language of earning to making. How do we make money? Wherever you go. Yeah. Oh, Jeff, this is a citizen uh, 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 TV station. How can we make money as right. a citizen? Right. Money is never made. You work for money and earn money. But in Kenya, everybody is talking a language of making money. Yes. How do you make money? This is just like going somewhere where you did not uh, uh, in, in somebody's uh, uh, property or land or something like that. You start harvesting maize. Uh, you did not plant the maize. You didn't weed. You didn't remove the weed and you didn't work on yeah. that land. And then you start harvesting. How? How? Do, uh, How? Without having done the hard work. That's what Kenyans it's are It's impossible. Today. Shortcut reaches, those are the results. If you are to audit about 4.6 trillion in terms of debt, what that man has done, yeah. you will be surprised. So if you were to have the president's ear, yeah. if he was to listen to you for half an hour, mm -hmm. what would you tell him? No, I would tell him to try very much to minimize all these voices and what have you. Look, it is not. It doesn't augur well for the government. Yeah, to, but you know, to be what? known that it, it 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 doesn't respect court orders, such like things, you know. Yes. Or confiscating people's passports. Mm. Uh, how does it? Ref, uh, how do? How are we reflected internationally? Yeah. Yeah. Was that wrong? Very much wrong. Taking in, in a modern society. Huh? Yeah, no, you don't do that. You remember Miguel another day. He, I don't know how much, uh, how many votes he garnered in Nairobi. About ten thousand. Yeah. Today, if he comes back. And there are elections in Kenya. Mm. He's a hero. Because you have made him a hero. Jubilee, Why do you make him a hero? Jubilee turned him into a hero? Absolutely. And you remember when Kibaki was going home, there was no position in Kenya. Yes. Because if you tell him some people are oh, there are people who are attacking government. You tell you, watch our same, eh? Serkali, you go kill a pahali. So, what a lana, true, what a choker. And that used to happen and it worked. Yes. Yeah? Yes. No confrontation. Right. Yeah. And he did marvelous development projects everywhere. So you're saying if Miguna were to come back and stand Today, for Today, he's uh, the most popular person in Nairobi. What are you talking, Jeff? Huh? Yes, because he has been made one. He can beat Sonko? Let me tell you. You know the young man at the coast called uh, Joho? Joho. Who made him a hero? Jubilee. Yes. Jubilee? Yeah. He's now the most admired politician in this country. And Jubilee made him a hero. But he's fighting ODM or NASA folks like David Ndi. He's fighting them. He's saying they're traitors. Miguna? Yes. I don't know. That is yes. their inside politics of trying to undo one another. Competition in politics is everywhere. Within? Yeah, within. Even if you go to Jubilee, eh, there is that unquietness a fight and you can't be able to uh, to an earth who is uh, who and who is doing what? Yes, that is normal in politics. But NASA lead co-principal Raila Odinga has uh, defended David D and his other colleagues. Oh yeah, because uh, he's the head. You can't like what you asked me. What do you think about Wetangul? I said no. As an elder, I don't want uh, to take an offense against. Yeah, but he's told you you're a joker in your gimmicks. Uh, no, no, he can't. But I have told you, Kenyans, believe in what I'm doing. I am for peace. I'm for a strong economy. Yeah. Huh? Could, could, could Miguna succeed Raila Odinga as, as the leader? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. Your thoughts? Uh, let me tell you, I don't know. Uh, come on, you just said if he came back, he could take Nairobi. Yeah, because Nairobi is a, a cosmopolitan place. But when it comes to Raila and where he comes from, Nyanza, and the, the historic, political historical background of Raila Mod Odinga, uh, yeah. a man who started his politics when he was young, uh, before the age of 14, up to today, you know, and you know him very well. Every day, every morning, he comes up with something new. Mm. He gets people with some surprises that you can't be able, you cannot be able to project yes. what he's going to say next. Yeah, yeah. So that is a, a terrible guy. Uh, the only person who tempted him, and I can tell you here for free, is Kibaki. <laughs> <laughs> no one else. And no one else. President Kenyatta. And he's, you know, President Kenyatta would have been the easiest person to work with Raila. Because you know, you have not, I don't know, he's your cousin, but have you been able to move close to him? <laughs>
His heart here is a, is a very good guy. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. At the bottom of his heart. Yes. Oh, he's a wonderful yeah. person. Mm. Yeah. But now there is push and pull. Within. Yeah. Sometimes he's fighting wars which are not his. Right. Yeah. And the succession wars as well. Absolutely. Particularly these five years will be more dangerous. For him, if he can't put down his foot as a president and say no. Yeah. Yeah. So what because he's supposed to leave a good legacy behind. Correct. Something that he will be remembered for. You think he'll be able to? He can. He still have time. Time is no, ticking. No, I've wasted about uh, almost six months. Exactly. Now. Time is ticking. Yeah. Tick tock, tick tock. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff! <laughs> you see? Uh. Time is ticking. Absolutely, the time is and ticking. And he's got these four pillars he talks about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Namely, infrastructure, uh -huh. education, uh -huh. employment, uh -huh. manufacturing. Yeah. Four pillars. Yeah. Is he going to be able to, to it achieve? It would have been impossible to achieve in about four and, a half month, four and a half years. This is what he would have started with when he came to power. Yeah. The first time. Uh, first time. And you see the most important part of any leadership is not to antagonize institutions and people. You, good governor is a governor who brings people together. People with descending voices, people who don't want to agree. Yeah. You reach them out. You lessen confrontation in your administration. Chest thumping is the worst that somebody can do yeah. and expect to win the support of the majority. But of maybe, maybe you know, every first term administration, their goal is to get a second term. That's the first thing, isn't it? It was obvious he was going to get a second term. Really? You remember I told you? Yes. If you can't be able to get the mom and support you have, and you are in that particular position, there are, you know, it is not all leaders of the world that are elected democratically. <laughs> it's not only, you know. It's better, and I've said this time and again, it's better to have a bad government than not to have a government. It doesn't matter at one time, Jaramoko Gingo Dinga, when people are questioning. Yeah. The, the 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 Moise uh, uh, legibility of being having been elected sometimes back around which year was that yes he said he told the Kenyans whether he came through the window <laughs> or whichever way <laughs> yeah let's support him yeah yeah so how because do we... he knew very well it's better yeah to have something in place called government than mm. not to have one is this government working I think so. Government is working, though it is not working to expectation of everybody. But I think the government is working. But, but there are a lot of difficulties. But then there's this impasse. There's this, you know, these two sides. There's so that much. is what the president should work on. Not head-on collusion all the time, uh, mm. but uh, he, should, he should use his diplomas and his office. But maybe, office. like you said, maybe it's the people around him yeah, who are yeah, pushing him absolutely. to do these things. Yeah, you see like writing a letter to the chief justice blaming the judiciary oh even if the judiciary is doing whatever it is doing you cannot sit down and you write a letter and you make that letter open mm. how are you perceived internationally all these judges all these courts and so on are being monitored by the united nations yes yeah including the international criminal court uh, in the National Court of Justice mm -hmm. and so many other courts. Mm. And judges are respected world over. So if you start attacking judges, people ask yourself, what? Yeah, what about ignoring court orders? That is the biggest problem we have. That is a very progressive way of doing things in a country that is developed like Kenya or a country that uh, hosts a lot of academicians. We have engineers, we have doctors, we have everybody. All professionals are here. Kenyans are satellite of the economic activities in this region. Mm. And we cannot disobey a court order. Yeah. Yeah. You we are the, attracting anarchy. Yes. Yeah. You heard the European ambassadors and also the U.S. ambassador to Kenya. They, they wrote an op-ed, last I think last weekend. Yeah. And they said the first thing, if NASA wants to talk, have discussions with the government, they need to recognize the president at least. What do you think? No, recognize but, them the supreme but, but, but i think that is a sole responsibility of kenyans to sort it out we should not be told by an outsider how to do our own businesses it is upon his excellent the president our own president president uhuru kenyatta and his team to make sure 
that uh, they reach out to their opponents and come out with a way forward of unifying the country. That is a duty of a leader. What you shouldn't be advised by the external forces. Mm. Yeah, you remember when we went to the elections, they were, uh, pre, uh, our president and his deputy were being viewed as criminals. Okay. After the elections now, they are saying all these people, yes. uh, you know. All you, these good things. Be, ah. So you shouldn't listen to those outside, if it were me. Yeah, you should just concentrate on your own way of leadership. And the world can exhibit it. It can do it very well. What if NASA insists that they won't recognize President Kenyatta? It doesn't matter. I've told you it's better to have a bad government in place than not to have a government. See how Somalia has been after Siad Bari yeah. for a long time. Yeah, you don't a, want to go that No, way. it's a basket yeah, case. Yeah, we can correct our mistakes uh, when, when, when there is peace. Yeah. And for those people who went to second war, who went to in Second World War, First World War, and people who have seen wars, people who have seen what is happening. You know, let me tell you, sometimes back I was in Aleppo in Syria. We had a conference there. In Aleppo? Aleppo in Syria. Mm. That was a wonderful place. A beautiful place. Go there today. It's a mess. It's finished. It's finished. It's gone. We don't want to go that route. Could we head there? You know, it starts like that when people are defying court orders. People don't want to listen to one another. People want to talk to each other. People want to reach out on others. You know, those some small, small disagreements, uh, deporting people like now like that. People who are supposed to be Kenyans. People who are supposed to be dealt with inter internally here. Mm. Yeah. So you said that was a great mistake. Big mistake. Yeah. That, you know, that, that shows that... Uh, uh, you 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 are not smart you know you 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 are leading under some fear you know there's some threats or something of that kind yeah. you are not yourself mm. because you must be a confident of whatever you say you must believe in what you are saying yeah uh, you must assert you, you know your own leadership mm. uh, you must show people that you are a leader you must plant a sense of direction into the masses that you are leading. Mm. And people must believe in you that you are a leader. What Look, about, after 1992, when we introduced multi-party democracy, yes. what Moy did? Moy went round. Our shilling was devalued. He went round promising people that after all this, what we are doing, our shilling will be strong. And some of the things he said are the things that we are seeing now. He said, you know, this is my part democracy, you mm. people you are crying for. Yes. One day you will say, Moi Rudy and so on. Moi Kuja, Abra Seba, Moi Enda. Because yeah. it will bring tribalism, it will bring some, you know, things that we will not be able to And understand. it has. And it has. It's divided yeah. all of us. Divided. I saw somebody tweeting saying, oh, Atwell is not partisan. It's partisan. Atwell is partisan simply because uh, it's, it's tribal. No, I'm not tribal. Our yeah. tribes, we can be proud of our tribes. Mm. We can use them positively without antagonizing one another. Because we have gone to a stage where all our political parties are pegged on our tribes. How do you come out of that unless you go through the same tribes yeah. Yeah, to make sure uh, things are done differently? And like what Nyerere did in Tanzania. Yeah. yeah. So this is why I'm saying we admire the young people we admired the youthful leadership of our president and his deputy uh, and they should be humble they should be able to reach out to their opponents talk to them not to scheme how to mishandle them how to fight them because they are creating clandestine movement uh, when you don't let people talk what they have freely yeah. you know yeah. when you don't let people air their views uh, when you don't debate when you want to use a mechanism to Bring, to defeat justice. When you shut down TV stations. Uh, stations. Uh, I will tell you what. Even Moy was interested in KTN and the standard newspapers when he was there. They used to write, go and check during his leadership. Mm. You see the editorial they used to write mm. against Khan. Mm. What he did, he told his Khan friends that let us have our own newspaper. He started Kenya Times. A newspaper to attack his own KTN understand that yes but he did not say let's shut down this television station that shows somebody who is trying to look at you even you know such like things we used to see in some other countries eh? newspapers offices being raided yeah. we couldn't believe it can happen here yeah yeah eh? so again it's the advice 
the advice? No, there are people who are, uh, I don't know how I can say, people who, who are just sitting on periphery to benefit out of such like confusion. That's what they yeah, like. That's what they are doing. And it is the highest time our president should realize that. You don't think he knows this? You know, people take advantage. And I told you one day, this young man is a good man. And he real, maybe he realizes later, after he has said yes, mm. without knowing. I think so. Because how do you allow people to go and read it? Yeah? And that, let me tell you, he would have allowed people to see what was happening at Urba. Yes. It didn't go more, it didn't take more than five minutes. No. No. Yeah. And then it, it, uh, was, it was over. Yeah, it was over. But for those who didn't see, they say it was a very great thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. You would have exposed that by letting people see and make their own judgments. Yeah. Yeah. And it is dangerous because it is one of the universal declarations of the United Nations yes. that uh, there must be free flow of information correct. to the government, to the citizens. You don't bar them from having access to information. No, especially yeah. in this day and age of and social media. And our constitution media. also and with emphasizes that. With social media. Social media. How do you stop that? You can't stop that. Let people judge by themselves. Yeah. Okay, you've had 30 minutes with the president. You have another 30 minutes with Raila. What do you tell him? With the president, I would tell him to be himself assertive, uh, employ assertiveness in his work, plan a sense of direction to masses, uh, not to listen too much to ad advisors who cannot. He has a, you know, when he left Kimemia, Kimemia went outside, Kimemia, who was a student of people like Mudaura, uh, people who knew how the provincial administration uh, mm. worked. Uh, worked. Yes. And uh, they threw him out. And then he brought in Kenya. Kenya is an intelligent person. If he listened to Kenya, mm. Joseph Kenya. Mm. Yeah. If he listens to Kenya very well, he's a very intelligent person. These are people who can help him. He has brought in now Mbugwa. Kenya the Mbugwa. Yeah. Yes. That is a right person. Yeah. Former, yeah. former AP commander. Uh, absolutely. Former governor. Absolutely. A person who, dev who developed uh, the administration police from nothing to something. These are the people who should be close to him. Not, not his agents. He should not lead us with his friends. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. should lead us with the strong minded people yeah. who can help him for free. Which age mates are you referring to in particular? I don't know. Oh, what, come on. Who are around him? Sometimes I see young boys around him, mm. some youthful guys. Mm. I don't know their names. Do you know their names? <laughs> you are related to him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he should be able to pick a telephone. Yes. And he says, I want to talk to Francis Atuoli. Yes. How, you are in Geneva. Yes. Yeah. You realize oh, and you notice man. that I'm an international guy. My friend. I my, have friends. My friend. Everybody knows you in Geneva. Yes. Everybody. They heard I was Kenyan. They said, do you know Francis Atuoli? Yes. People I don't even know. Yes. Do you know Francis Atuoli? Because I don't go there. And go around to shops looking for biryani, <laughs> <laughs> looking for the nice perfume. Yeah. I attend the meetings. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying, I say what I want to say. Are you saying these young boys office. go shopping? Most of these people you hear on the delegations, they go shopping. Yeah. Last year you had, there was a chairman of the uh, Labor and Social Affairs Committee in the Parliament. Yes. He came to Geneva. We did see him in the conference. Uh. And I had to, uh, to call the, the press conference while I'm there. Right. Because to get the guy. And right. he had been paid, per diem, yes. everything. What was he? A ticket bought for him. What was he? This is what most of Kenyans do. Nobody will know you. You need to stand up and make sure that your interventions are heard. And you make a statement in the plenary. Yes. On behalf of your country, on behalf of your organization. Right. Yeah. Leave. And I'm elected. We are always elected there. Leave the I'm serving my fourth term as a member of the International mm. Labour Organization yeah. governing body. Leave the Brionis alone. By more than 5,000 people. Yeah. Leave the Brionis. From all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. When uh, you come back here, people say, oh, this guy make a lot of noise, do this and that. Yeah. I'm from a pressure group. 
court is not a department of Ministry of Labor. So why wouldn't the president pick up the phone and call a twirly? Yeah, if things are going the way they are going, he should get concerned. He must have few, few individuals from various important organizations. I'm leading 2.5 million Kenyan workers. And also from Eritrea to Madagascar, the large Eastern Africa, mm. more than 5 million workers that I speak for as their president. I speak for Africa, the organization of the African Trade Union Unity. And yet, the president won't take your call. He's supposed to call me and ask him, France. I'm the vice president of the International Trade Union Confederation with an office in Brussels, Belgium. Hey. You can't just dismiss me like that. <laughs> you pick up a telephone, you say, before we shut this uh, TV station, yes. Mr. Twilio, how do you think it? I'll tell him internationally, we will be blacklisted. Yeah? Yeah. Before, As, before you deport Miguna. Yeah. He asks, well, how, how can we deal with this guy? I will tell him, leave this guy, let him talk whatever he wants. Yeah. People will see massive uh, because we have a government in place. You make a good point, my friend. You make a good point. That must be very frustrating for you then. You remember last time when I was here, mm. I told you if the president would have just decided from State House to to Karen, where Raila stays, it's not less than five minutes. Yeah. He's down there. Mm. Raila is up there or in the bedroom. The president is in the sitting room or in the lounge. He, he asked, just appears. Yeah, I want to see him. Come here, my brother. What is the problem? Kenya is ours. Where are you going? What do you want? We are now one-to-one. -one. Let us talk. Mm. Leave everyone else behind. Yeah. Outside. We would have not been where we are now. Huh? Yeah. He has made Raila another hero. Everybody now, he, he is like... Uh, a, a, another a sect, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But the best thing the president did, and I want to thank this government for that, was not to interfere with that swearing. Yes. I want to thank, you know? Yeah. They told the police to stand down. Absolutely. Stand down. We didn't lose any life or any property. And nothing happened. Yeah. Business went on. Our shilling remained steady. But we were shut down. Yeah. But that sh shutting down was a big problem. Huh? Yeah. You know, I, I don't uh, know. Uh, Sometimes I sit down and say, what is happening? Why don't you reach out and talk to him? Why don't you reach out? You're the elder brother. You know normally what they do? Mm. These guys are the people who allow you to see the president. If you are a person like me, because I don't go to stay, I can't go to see the president because I want handouts. I will go there and tell him what I think is right for this country. Maybe that's what he needs. Yeah. No, no, no. That's what he needs. No, 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 no. Our president would not, uh, you know, and those people around him would not allow you to go and see him. Why Because not? they know you will tell him the truth, how the nation should, you know, what he should do for this country, how he should behave with so and so, so and so. So when you ask, you want to see the head of state, they will say, no, try in the afternoon. Mm. Try tomorrow. Mm. The president is very busy. Come another week. Huh? <laughs> Until one day when he will go, be going somewhere on his own way, he sees the country is going down and not diving like this. Then he says, you people who are not telling me. Yeah. So when he will realize that those people who are supposed to advise him, they were shutting, they were closing doors for those people who would have helped the president. And that is why I told you, President Uhuru would have been a president during Michuki's time, Jenga Karume's time, mm. it's unfortunate that these two old guys had passed on. These are the guys who would have sat him down and told him, look, this is a society and this is the way we want you to lead this country. Yeah. yeah. Now there's no one to tell him? Opportunists. People who go to appear before him, their hands are behind here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> He doesn't want the country sinking. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you have such people around you, you are in trouble. You need to have people who can criticize you, people who can say. I remember when I took over Central Organization of Trade Unions. Mm. I went to the then president. It was the time he was leaving the government. And I told him, for the few months you are still around, Your Excellency, some, some of your ministers, I would not agree with them. And don't think that I'm against the state, I'm against the government. 
but I will pinpoint out their mistakes and weaknesses. You told him? Yeah. You and told he him? said that is okay. To his face? Yeah. And what did he say? He said that is the right person. I don't want the hero wash pass. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of ministers, yeah. what do you think of the our new cabinet secretaries, uh, this new lineup? What are your thoughts? No, I think if they are supported, they will do a good job. Huh? If they are supported, they will do a good job. They can do a good job. Yeah? Yeah. It was a good mix. A good mix? Yeah. Monica Juma, Foreign Affairs, Amina Mohammed, Education. It was a good... You know, in education, if you would have asked me, I would have... I, I, I would have I told you that let, let, let Matiang remain there. Uh, because he was bringing in good reforms for... Radical changes. Uh, absolutely. Yes. But uh, then he, the deciding organ is elsewhere. Yeah. So, but uh, I think the cabinet we have is good. Who would you have put at internal then, if Matiangi was education? Oh, there are so many people like... Uh, uh, the former DPP. Uh, Kiriaku? Yeah, can do a good job. Internal security? Oh, he can do a good job. That guy is an all-round guy. Uh, and mm. so many others would have helped him. I don't think, but, but Yang, he was good specifically for, for education. education. Yeah. yeah. Uh, foreign affairs? Yeah, Monica Juma. I mean, I had done very well, she but Monica equally can do well. Yeah. Yeah. She's also those up are to strong, task. those are strong, tough guys. Yeah. Monica, I know she, she will do a good job. Mm. I'm convinced. All of those guys, including my young man from my own area, Rashid. Yes. He's going to do a good job. Rashid will be okay? Oh, he'll be okay. Huh? Yeah. We want to celebrate guys like that one. Yeah. Yeah. Those, that, those, those are the guys that those people, the young people of his age, understands them. Yeah. So you, you, you agree with that? Absolutely. Rotich Finance? Oh, that is a very brilliant guy. Okay. So brilliant, with all these problems of trillions and so on, yes. he has steered as well. Hmm? Rotich is okay. I think the cabinet of President Uri, but what it requires is the support, total support from the government itself, total support from Kenyans. Yeah. So, so you, you have confidence in this, uh, in this new uh, lineup? Of course. They are brilliant guys. Look, G, uh, look at the lady in the Minister of Health. Yes. Yeah. She's a very experienced person. She has been in the civil service sometimes. I think they can deliver. And Cleopa was... Uh, 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 yeah. He's heading to your favorite city. <laughs> Let him come. There. I think he will do well. Geneva. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, the appointment is also gay. But the president should give them maximum support yeah. and budget allocation. Yeah. Because I will tell you what, like my minister, of yes. labor, it's underfunded. Who's your yeah. minister now? Uh, Okuri Atan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a very well experienced person. He has been in civil service. He's okay. a diplomat. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's You'll be able to guy. work with him? Uh, with me, I can work with anybody. Yeah. And you saw Ababu Munamwambo was tossed a bone. Eh? He, you know, they tossed him a nice bone. Mm, that is good. Let him try. Mm? Yeah. He's like an assistant minister. Ah, other than being free, <laughs> that will keep him busy. <laughs> you know, it will give him busy. Yeah. yeah. But they left out Hassan Omar. Maybe there are still opportunities ahead, we don't know. Uh -huh. There are a lot of people yeah. uh, who they supported them at 11th hour. Yes. And they are out. <laughs> uh, like the former governor of Viga. Yeah. yeah and, uh, uh, like the Otuoma in Busia. Yeah, Otuoma. Uh, and so many yeah. who have been left outside. Yes. Uh, so they might be considered later. We don't want to say that they have been left out. You never know. But what they should do, they should continue uh, supporting the party and being loyal to the party. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, SG, I want to take a break, come back, talk uh, about going forward, uh, the future. Yeah. Will Raila run in 2022? Of course. Huh? Of course. You didn't even have to think about it. No, you can't think about it. Will Kalonzo run? Of course. Will my DVD run? Of course. Oh, come on, man. Is everybody running again? Yeah, what do they do now? What else can they do? Until when you people decide you are not VTI, you want this one and here. But Joho says he wants to run? Yeah, of course, he will have to run. He's free to do so. That's a crowded field. Absolutely. Is a Tony going to run for the. No, I, I told you I'm not interested in politics. You're lying. Uh -huh. You're a politician. You're uh -huh. a politician. No. But then you, you know who they all have to beat. The one clear front runner right now. Uh -huh. Right? 
what I've told you here. And I no, I'm to... telling you the clear front runner yeah. is William Samoe Arab Ruto. I accept with you, but let me tell you, I've been around for some time. So, and listen to me carefully. One day in politics is like 10 years. What are you trying to say? One day in politics. What are you trying to say? You know, uh, have you heard that Luya song which says, uh, Bindu Bicha and Janga? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard that song? Bindu Bicha and Janga. Uh, yes. It's uh, Luya Sarbantu, Kikuyu Sarbantu. You yes. don't need an interpreter to tell you Bindu Bicha and Janga. Yes. What does that mean? It means things change. Yes. So you can't be certain that this, this is my candidate up from now to 2022. A lot of things would have changed. Between now and then? Yeah, no, between now and then. I'm telling you, I was around here. Yes. When we lost the late Thomas Joseph Boy, I was working. It was on a Saturday, 1969. July 5th. July 5th. But during those days, we used to work on Saturday. Where were you working? At the industrial area, at the then East African Post and Telecommunication Administration Depot. Wow. And you heard the news? Arriving in the house, the news tells us, oh, the late Thomas Boy has been assigned. And... People knew very well that after Mr. Jomo Kenyatta, our next president will be Thomas Joseph Boyer. You knew that then? Yes. You talked but, about oh, it then? Even when Mzee was in the rally, check those old, if you have those clips, when he's addressing the public and he, he, wants, he wants to consult some Boyer. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. He starts addressing. <laughs> so people had a lot of confidence in that young man yes. that he will be the next president. What happened? People, people didn't know Moy would succeed President Kenyatta. Yeah. So there's, things changed. There was a whole movement against Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Now, after that, Moy came in. The most powerful person in Moy's administration was no any other person other than Charles Mugane and Jojo. Yes. Who also thought yeah. he could... Yeah. Who Moy convinced yes. to, to get out of the Attorney General's of chambers. Yes. Run for office. Uh, office in, 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 in Kikuyu. Kikuyu. Yeah, become and an MP. Come become an MP and a minister and a minister for the constitutional and what have you. Yes, most powerful. Yes, and people knew very well after Moi is Mugane who will be the pre president. Did he become the president? No, he didn't. He was cut down, ha. kicked out. Absolutely. After that, so what are you saying about the present situation? I have told you time and again, if it were me. And you ask me whether you will be a candidate 2022, I will tell you no. If I'm working under President Kenyatta, I would say I'm serving my president, President Uhuru Kenyatta. Time will tell when we are we reach there. So we But I can't acquire yeah. some confidence yes. and say it is me who is going to be. <laughs> it is until it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Look, JM, uh, come to JM Karioki. Yes. JM Karioki when the late Tom Boyer died. He's the only Kikuyu who went and attended the funeral. And he was received well in Nyanza. Mm. When some of, even when some Luos were chasing away their Kikuyu wives, they said, you come. Yeah. He was liked everywhere. And people knew, Jem, one day he will be the president of the Republic of Kenya. But others had other plans. After him, Robert Oko. Yes, after Mdavadi, after everybody, Moi, Senior Mdavadi, Moses Mdamba Mdavadi, mm -hmm. Moi shifted now his allegiance and closeness to Dr. Robert Oko. And everybody knew it was Dr. Robert Oko. Even when they are in a faction, he would ask Dr. Robert Oko to yeah. say something. And that is the end. The president doesn't say anything. Did he become the president? No, he didn't. After him, the latest, people knew very well the person who is going to take over Kenya was Saitoti. Mm. Brilliant. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Tall guy. Yeah. Even me, I was convinced. He was the Professor next. of mathematics. Mm. Smart. Did he become one? No. So it is until when you are there. Yes. And it is not only here. World over. Because you see, People who make presidents are not politicians. The people right who... now, Kenyans, eh? yes. they are on drawing board. Yes. If this guy gets here, how mm. would it be my business? <laughs> <laughs>
Hold that thought. Hold that thought, SG. The, the scariest thing is all these people you mentioned are dead. Or were dead before they could become president. Yeah, because things do change. V2 V Changanga. V2 Changanga. Oh. Wow. That's deep. Huh? That's deep. Let's take a break. Come back. Talk some more. Is that okay? Yes. Good man. Uh, the poll we were asking, Atwali's question. What was it, Monica? Francis Atwali says, Kenyans believe in what I am doing. Do you agree? 46% say yes. 54% say no. These are people who don't know what they are saying. Those <laughs> <laughs> who are saying no. Because what I've said here all the time has come to pass. Yeah. So they are the people. You know, let me tell you, the problem with the Kenyans. Yes. They forget very quickly. Mm. Myopic. Yeah. Short-sighted. Short-sighted. Those yes. are the number 54. Yes. But if they were following closely what I've been saying yes. here, and it has all come to pass, yeah. they would believe in me. They will believe in me. Hmm. They will believe in me. <laughs> they will believe in me. I'm telling you. Because I've seen it happen. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it all. Right. This is what I'm telling you. That is why I'm telling you, if it were me. Yes. You tell me, Francis, I told you, you want to become a member of parliament. I said, no. People will decide. Mm. Let the people decide. Let the people decide. Okay, we've decided to go for a break. Let's keep tweeting at Atwali Francis, at Kwenanga Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya. Hashtag is JK Live. I tell you, it's getting pretty hot in here. Where's that extinguisher? Monica? <laughs> JKL takes a break. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> v2 v Jane Janga. Uh, Jane Janga. Mm. Ah. system that was brought to us by Safaricom.